understand Iranian cinema, you have to understand the recent history of Iran itself. In the 1960s, there was the Shah of Iran, or the king, and he was very pro-Western. So there were lots of pro-Western movies that were kind of sexy comedies with girls in bikinis and sports cars. Then came the Islamic Revolution in 1979, led by the Ayatollah Khomeini, the one everybody knows about. He came along, and then they burnt cinemas as symbols of Western decadence. Cinema was actually outlawed for a while. Then they took over the American embassy and there was a hostage crisis, so movies became filled with propaganda against the West. After that, there was the Iran-Iraq war, and the Americans backed the Iraqis to attack Iran, which became the eighth bloodiest war in history. So lots of war films, lots of anti-Iraqi films, and lots of anti-Western films were made. Then, as the war ended, there were all these film crews around, so they started making movies. And this begins a renaissance in Iranian cinema. And despite all the restrictions and censorship and propaganda, these amazingly creative films were sneaking out of Iran and getting critically acclaimed. And then in 1997, the world really sat up and took notice when A Taste of Cherry won the Palme d'Or in Cannes. And its director, Abbas Kiarostami, became a worldwide figure in film. Since then, you always see Iranian films at the film festivals, and their content has become much more critical, dealing with things that were taboo before, like women, fucked up war veterans, Afghan refugees, and the poor. The next stop on the film tour of Tehran was the Iranian Film Museum. They had the usual photos and awards and posters, and my favorite, wax figures. So this is Ezzatola. He's their big star from before the revolution and after the revolution. There's the children's section. I don't know if you can get a good shot of this. Maybe it's not the way he used to be, but it's scary. Thank God I'm not on acid. These two guys are freaking me out. The one thing that we did learn at the museum was how the Ayatollah Khomeini saved Iranian cinema. In 1979, people were burning cinemas and no one was making any movies. Then one day, the Ayatollah's at home, he's watching TV, and on comes a movie called The Cow, which is a pre-revolutionary movie, but it's not a sexy comedy. It's about real people with real problems. He watched it and he said, actually, I'm not against cinema, I'm against promiscuity. So that one line, just that one sentence, and bam, they stopped burning the cinemas, they started making films again, and that one sentence saved Iranian cinema. So that actor in the wheelchair on the film set is Jamshid Mashiyaki. He was actually in The Cow, the film that not only saved Iranian cinema, but is actually credited by being the first in the Iranian New Wave movement. <laughs> now what is Iranian New Wave cinema? Well, it's kind of a combination between French New Wave cinema, Italian neorealism, fiction, documentary filmmaking, all mixed up into one, with all the restrictions of Sharia law, so you can't have kissing and you can't have hand-holding. So the sort of Spielberg and Lucas of Iranian New Wave cinema are Moshe Makhmabov and Abbas Kiarostami. Now, the star of Kiarostami's film, A Taste of Cherry, Hamayun Ashradi, was actually at the next film set we went to, and I was like, hey, I recognize you, because he was in The Kite Runner as well. You've been acting in Iranian cinema for a long time. Not for a long time. I became an actor uh, by accident. Mm -hmm. I'm architect. I graduated in Italy as an architect, and I worked all my life as an architect in Canada and Iran. And when I came back to Iran in 1991, yeah. Mr. Kiyosami saw me, so I became an actor. Uh, yeah, oh, that was my first one. And you became, uh, I guess, for us in the West, famous because of uh, Kite Runner. Yes. How is that different to, to be in a film like that versus a, a more traditional Iranian cinema? Uh, you see, it's not that much difference between acting in Iran or acting there. The, the difference is between the technology, you know, but the acting is not that much difference. You're, yeah. you're acting here, you're acting there. The same. And yeah. did Kite Runner get released in Iran? No. No. It didn't. But the, I think everybody saw it. To, DVD. Uh, DVD, the pirate DVD. Right. Yeah. But you're a very famous Iranian actor outside of Iran. Actually, I think so. Yeah. Yes. I'm more famous over there than here. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. So we left the film set and we went to an acting school, which is actually really interesting because, you know, we hear that Iran is a really conservative country and they have Sharia law. I expected it would be 90% men. But actually, when we got there, there was just as many women as there were men. We were so surprised at this, in fact, that we went to meet Faresh Tatarapur, who was one of the first women producers in Iran. And we wanted to ask her, what is it like to be a woman in the Iranian film industry? 
Uh, before Revolution, we had only actress. Yeah. We didn't have any female director, right. female producer, female art designer. But after Revolution, it completely changed. It uh, found a cultural meaning working in the field of cinema, and it was a good prestige for people to work in this field. But the other thing I want to tell you as a secret, that if you stay here longer, you will realize that uh, women here are not weak. And even sometimes I am more powerful than men because the government doesn't want to be in the position that anybody say, okay, you don't pay attention to women. In that case, they will at least pretend that to respect me more than men. After that, the next thing we wanted to do was go buy some Iranian movies. Here we have The Mothman Prophecies, maybe the worst movie ever made. We have Escape Velocity, never heard of it. We've got some good classics here. Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> this is Walking Tall 2. And next to that we have the Ayatollah, I guess, giving a speech. And what's interesting is that even though there are only about three or four American films a year, and you don't see a lot of Western music on the shelves, all the kids we talked to knew every American blockbuster. There's so many bootlegs out there, and something like 44% of the households in Iran have satellite. Half of Tehran has family in London, the other half has family in LA, and they know everything about them. The latest music, the latest styles, they knew everything. So when we were in the shop, we noticed that like 20 DVDs had this one woman on the cover, Manaz Afshar. And we said, wow, she must be a really big star. She's in like every movie. And they said, oh, do you want to meet her? So they called her up and she was actually having a jewelry show that night. And so she invited us to come up and check out her jewelry. We're outside of Tehran somewhere in a very rich suburb um, with one of the biggest stars. She's like the Kate Winslet of Iran. And a bunch of her friends just arrived. And it's kind of the upper crust, elite, sexy, hair dyed, boots out Tehran, which we haven't seen much of at all. We've seen boots in full hijab. So it's interesting to see. How is it to be a big celebrity in Iran? Can you go shopping? Can you go out on the street? Uh, yes, because I like. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what I like. You like the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what is because, the problem? Because too many people coming to Too many to people. You? For sign, for picture. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Photography, yeah. And here in Iran, is it the same as Europe or America that celebrities are always in the newspapers? They're looking at your life? Uh, what? No, 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 no. Not to Iran because uh, in Iran, uh, the um, privacy is privacy, very important. Very important. Yeah. So they don't uh, go through her garbage or anything? <laughs> No. <laughs> so you can be private only when you go outside? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Merci. you. Nice okay. to meet oh, you. I don't know if I'm no problem. Okay. <laughs> so after the jewelry show, we had to hurry because we were late to crash dinner with the jury from the International Urban Film Festival. Tomorrow night's the last night, the grand gala. So tonight, all the directors are here, all the writers are here, and the jury is here to talk about the films. Mr. Shane Smith, Mr. Rizzo, that's Hello. the director of Hello. the festival. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having us. Very nice. Thank you. 